and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. My brothers and sisters, today we recall those two great pillars of our church, Peter the Apostle and Paul called to the band of the Apostles, on which we have learnt our faith, of which we have learnt of our Saviour. We gather with the church throughout the world this day, based on the Apostles, based on their faith, and place ourselves humbly before God our Father as their successors. We look to their example to guide us in our lives. We are aware, though, that so often we fall away from such faith. Our thoughts, words and actions lead us so often away from Christ our Saviour, and we fall into sin. Let us then, as we gather wherever we are, in the name of our Saviour, offer to him those failings and ask for his mercy and forgiveness to heal us afresh. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather all into your kingdom. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us 
to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let's pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the Apostles Peter and Paul, give us the noble and holy joy on, on this day. Grant, we pray, that your Church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid violent hands upon some who belonged to the church. He had James, the brother of John, killed with the sword. After he saw that it pleased some of the people, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the festival of unleavened bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison and handed him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending to bring him out to the people after the Passover. While Peter was kept in prison, the church prayed fervently to God for him. The very night before Herod was going to bring him out, Peter, bound with two chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while guards in front of the door were keeping watch over the prison. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly, and the chains fell off his wrists. The angel said to him, Fasten your belt and put on your sandals. He did so, and he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter went out and followed him. He did not realise that what was happening with the angel's help was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. After they passed the first and the second guard, they came before the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went outside and walked along a lane, when suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hands of Herod and from all that the people were expecting. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, the Lord set me free from all my fears. The Lord set me free from all my fears. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. The Lord set me free from all my fears. I magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord set me free from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, set your, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The Lord set me free from all my fears. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. The Lord set me free from all my fears. 
A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day, that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. You are Peter the rock on which I will build my church. The gates of hell will not hold out against it. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to your Lord. When Jesus came into the districts of, of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist and others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hard to see it here, but I'll try and put a picture on the uh, description when this arrives on your phone, tablet, computer, laptop, whatever it is. But then on the top of the sheet today, we've got a picture of a, a church, um, St. Peter and St. Paul, Swanscombe. Well, uh, let me just take you on a very, very fast tour of uh, Swanscombe. Swanscombe is named after Swain's Camp in, in, old, in uh, old English. Uh, it is down in Kent, uh, just uh, near the River Thames, um, and is, uh, Swain was a local uh, uh, tribal leader uh, at the time of the, uh, the Britons, and the Romans arrived, and Swain set up camp at this place uh, as he uh, prepared to go and fight the Romans and stop them invading Britain. Well, we know he wasn't very successful, obviously, uh, and uh, subsequently, over the years that followed, uh, a, a small town, of, a small village, uh, and then quite a large village grew up there, uh, named after Swanscombe or Swain's Camp. Um, it had a church, uh, an eventually church, had a Saxon church, uh, and then eventually the Normans, there was invasions going on down in that part of the world, the Normans turned up, and uh, the church, as we see it now, 12th or 13th century, was built upon the foundations of the Saxon church. There's over a thousand years of a place there where people have come to worship God. And named after, or named after the two great patrons, Peter and Paul. It's an extraordinary church, it's quite small, um, and it's where I was baptised. We, live, we lived there as a family, my father was the priest there from 1975 to, uh, 1970 to 1975, uh, and I was baptised in the last year there, my birthday, and Easter Eve, um, my little Cub Scout uniform, and I leant over the font. I was eight years old, and I was baptised. But it was an extraordinary town, a lovely small little village. It had its ups and downs like so many other places. But it was under the patronage of Peter and Paul. Peter. 
We come today and remember Peter. And we have those, that first reading, extraordinary reading, kind of, it's a great adventure that we have today. And of course, Peter comes all through the Gospels. He's the Gospel one. And we hear as well today, uh, the Gospel reading there, of Jesus saying, you are the rock on which I build my church. Petros means rock. Um, it was Simon, but he was renamed Peter. And, in, uh, and out of there has grown something very strong. We, out of there has grown the church. Out of there has grown our very core faith, which at times, like Peter, is often a bit messy. He's a very adventurous apostle. I like Peter because it feels very much, I think, I kind of feel an affinity with him, really. It's very strange that many years later, it was in St. Peter's in Leicester um, from which uh, this emerged. <laughs> um, and I had, for once, I used to carry the keys, uh, St. Peter's keys around with me. There we go. That was all a packet, uh, a bunch of St. Peter's keys in my pocket. I had the keys to the kingdom. Well, never mind. But it's based on that Peter is a man with his uh, failings, with his um, stubbornness, sometimes with his selfishness, sometimes with his fears and his guilt. He has all of those things that we can associate with. But the extraordinary thing is, Jesus calls him. He is the one, the fisherman. How educated he was, whether he had a couple of degrees under his belt, I don't know, probably not. We don't know too much about that. But we do know, as we read through firstly Mark's Gospel and then expands into Matthew and Luke, of a real relationship. It's a real um, grown, uh, close friendship. Jesus should have chosen one of the others. Andrew was the oldest. James and John. It wasn't them. He chose Peter. And Peter is the base for the church. We know that eventually, in that extraordinary uh, Acts of the Apostles, you know, that he had this adventurous life. Eventually was, of course, um, uh, arrested, and eventually in Rome he met his fate, like so many of the other, well, like all but one of the other apostles. And then Paul. Paul, the one who is different. Paul, the one whose journey wasn't quite such a, a sort of day-by-day um, -day life with Jesus, of course. Paul begins in a very different way. Paul begins by being someone persecuting Christ. He held the cloaks whilst they st stoned Stephen to death. Very well, clearly says that. He's the one who went out searching out Christians and demanding that they renounce Jesus. And then, on the road to Damascus, this moment happens when he is flung into darkness in fear and then released by the followers of God, by the elders in Damascus, who help him discover that Jesus is his saviour. He then goes on, does he not? He goes on to write, and we have so much of his writings, all these letters. Today, the letter of Paul to Timothy, second letter of Paul to Timothy, coming at the end of, he is now also in prison in Rome. The luxury of being a Roman citizen allows him to be executed there. But he's held in prison there and he's on, on his death sentence at the moment. He's on death row. And he's still writing. And he's still, for that moment, he discovers Jesus. He's looking into himself. He's still trying to discover where God is. The adventure, the journey of Peter, is almost balanced up by the discovery, the inner discovery, the theology of Paul. Jesus, Peter knows Jesus is his saviour. He just knows it and will show you. Paul wants you to understand why Jesus is your saviour. He wants you to discover it and work it out. So as the church was freed from its years of captivity, from those centuries of captivity and persecution that we had, these two apostles, 
the Apostle Peter, and the one, well, we called him Apostle. You can uh, just argue over that one if you want. But Paul, drawn into the apostolic band because of Christ and the road to Damascus, we say. These two drawn together to give us a full and glorious picture, a full and glorious understanding of just who we are. Authenticity is something which we seek in the church. What are we based on? Where do we come from? We've, it's a real popular thing at the moment, is it not? To, because of the power of the internet, you can go on and search up your, uh, your ancestors, ancestry.com and all those other things. I wasn't advertising, by the way. <laughs> There's a real uh, uh, you know, um, uh, great industry built up at the moment of searching back through the records. There's more and more of them put online and you can find them. Finding out who your great, 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 great grandfather was and discovering that he was in prison for stealing bread or something shameful. <laughs> or maybe something great. Who knows? It's a real industry. We yearn to know about our history. If I go into someone's house, so often there's all the pictures of the family. They go back to really, I've got them in my house, to when the camera was invented. It goes back to the 18, well, it became popular, the 1890s. Pictures and memories to let us know who we are. We feel adrift if we don't know. We feel that, you know, where do we come from? What are we? Peter and Paul give us that authenticity as Christians that we seek. Our church, as we say in the Creed, is an apostolic church. We are based on the apostles. We don't just pluck ourselves from somewhere else. We are based on the apostles. When, Peter, when Jesus said to Peter, you are the rock on which I build my church, that is it. That is the first piece of the foundations that we have of our Christian faith. That is added to the faith that has been before from Abraham. So when he calls Peter, he calls us. I said earlier on that I was baptised in St. Peter and St. Paul Swanscombe. It's got a thousand years. Here in St. Bartholomew's, uh, we haven't got a thousand years on this spot yet. But that doesn't mean we are not an authentic people. If you've only discovered Jesus within the last six months, year, five years, you are not new. You are part of the authentic church. You just discovered what has been there waiting for you. From that moment that Jesus spoke to Peter, he was speaking to you too. We, as I say, are built on the apostles. As priests, we are ordained by bishops who are ordained by bishops who trace their ancestry back to the ordination by the apostles and to that great commission, that great announcement by Christ to Peter, the authority given. It's what we are. It's what gives us confidence. There's another thing about St. Peter and St. Paul Swanscombe. It's a very small thing, quite unnoticed really, unless you go looking for it. I was a little kid and I remember it's very exciting. Right at the east end of the church, right at the east end of the church, it's a Norman building. It's made up of all kinds of bits and pieces, by the way, the church. There's Saxon stuff, there's Roman arches in there, nicked from Roman ruins nearby. But if you go up to the east end of the church on the right-hand side, there's a tiny little door, only about so big, foot, foot square, you open it up and it goes straight outside. It's where they used to hand out food, the sacrament, to those who were ill during plague. Those who were unclean and waited outside church. It's a very real reminder 
that the church is a timeless thing, that we are here to be amongst people, to be the authentic people of God in no matter which direction our world takes us. We find ourselves at this time with the virus around us and with all the people upside down, those rushing off on holidays or whatever, those who are afraid at home. We are surrounded by people in all their states we are called to be like Peter. We are called to be a rock, the authentic place where the love of Christ can be felt. We continue here at St Bartholomew's to give our money to the charities that need it. We continue here to pray as the people for those around us who we know are reaching out as a thousand years ago they reached out to that small door at St Peter and St Paul Swanscombe. Our challenge, my dear friends, is to continue. Remain true to our apostolic foundations. To remain as the authentic people of God in our communities, wherever we are to keep seeking in our hearts, like Paul, a closer understanding of our Saviour. To keep feeling that love and sharing that love, which Paul understands so well, that comes from Christ, our Saviour. Peter and St Paul brought together the bedrocks of our faith the authority of Christ and the love of Christ revealed through them, shared through you, when you were baptised, just as I was, all those years ago. And so with our brothers and sisters throughout the world, let us declare the faith as one today. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation who came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so let us then continue at this time to pray. And we pray for all who are attending others for the work of our care, care services, our health services, for those who look after loved ones and especially those who are still at home, for whom this time has become a, a burden. We pray for the communities and for the family groups in which we live for our friends and neighbours, and for words and gestures shared, revealing Christ's love. We pray for all struggling on our parish sick list, all who ask us day by day for our prayers. And we offer to God those who have passed from this life, for the eternity 
revealed through Paul and the apostles. May be open to us all. We pray with our brothers and sisters throughout the world and place our own needs now before God our Father, confident that he hears us. Hear us, Lord, as we lift up our lives to you in prayer. Read our hearts well. And answer these prayers in ways we know, in ways we cannot understand. We call upon you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were baptised into one body. Let us then pursue everything that makes for peace, and builds up our life together. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. May the prayer of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration. And may their intercession make, of, make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice. We ask this 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, and lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your provident, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter foremost in confessing the faith, Paul its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel, Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each in a different way gathered together the one family of Christ, and revered together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For well, through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Bartholomew, Mark, Anne, Peter, Paul, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servants Jonathan, Robert, Nick, our bishops, your clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we have the confidence to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you. Tony, say the word, and I shall be healed. So let's pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may, may be one heart and one soul, made steadfast in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Well, my dear friends, it's a strange time, strange times. I find myself a little, I'm, I'm quite unsettled today in a way. Um, I don't know, there's a, there's a lot that happened today. Not only was I, was I baptised at St. Peter's and Paul, this is the uh, first time I preached ever in uh, St. Peter's Walsingham, Great Walsingham, and then St. Mary's, uh, many, many moons ago. So, uh, first sermon was about St. Peter. <laughs> there you go. And the priest that uh, my vocation officer was called, funny enough, Peter. So, there we are. So, if you're called Peter, watch out. <laughs> there we go. Well, I know one there. Now, there's been lots and lots of questions this week, uh, and, and I know there's a lot of agonising and agony, and I understand it, I really do, over the, um, where we are with churches. Yes, we are open this afternoon, a little longer today, between one and three. Um, so if you uh, see this and you want to come down, you can do. And we will continue to be open every Sunday um, uh, after that, as, as required. Um, don't open during the week. Um, it's very complicated. Um, the, uh, the rules are quite strict about the hygiene and so forth. It makes it very difficult, but we will see what we can do. Services. Now, many of you, uh, as you can see on the sheet, we're hoping to have services. Now, I do say, I have to be very cautious, and I know this is difficult to hear. We're going to have to be very cautious about um, coming back to public worship. We have still not received and uh, the diocese and told the formalists did this yesterday, we've still not received any of the instructions from the government uh, about how we are able to become COVID-19 compliant, that sounds crazy, but that's the phrase, to be able to open as a, a, for um, public worship. Uh, none, of the, none, none of the religions, none of the churches in this country have received that information yet. So we do not know what we have to comply with to be able to have public worship. And we do not know yet what the constraints and the limits and so forth are. As of now, I do not know Sunday. We have next Sunday, hopefully, and I will let you know, hopefully we will be able to have public worship together. I know that could, we keep going, oh, they keep saying we can do this, we can keep opening, we can but it's like we've been given, but there is a lot that we have to do, comply with. Um, the risk assessments that uh, we have to do are very, very thorough alongside the practical work and so forth. Um, so we're trying. So please, I hope to be able to do what we say here that we can continue from the 5th of July here in church. But it will be, if that happens, it will be in a very measured way. I think that's the phrase, a very measured way. Um, we won't have choir, we won't have singing. Um, that, uh, we can be pretty sure on that one. Uh, and music, we know, we know that. Um, it'll be very measured and we don't know what the uh, government guidelines are. So please, please bear with me. So I feel very, I'm always saying no, I'm always saying not yet. I feel like I'm the voice of doom, and I think a lot of clergy are, you know, they're announcing it in the press and we're going, oh, hang on a second. Uh, and I'm aware, I'm very aware that our bishops um, and archdeacons are feeling great pressure as we are trying to practically bring this about. Open the doors, I hear you say, well, there's no problem, you know. Just open the doors, come in. What's the problem? There's nothing happening. The, Nobody's caught COVID. Well, I can't argue with, I can't say anything. We just have to do what is compliant with the law. Okay, so we do that. So hold your horses. Hopefully, I will inform you, of course, all by, by email, and it will go on the parish website um, if we are having public worship next Sunday. Um, it has been, it's been, the government has given us permission to do it. It's not an order to do it. We put permission to do it if we are able to fulfil whatever the guidelines are when they emerge. Okay? Oh, dear. Strangely, this week, uh, I would normally be clearing off uh, on Thursday and getting ready for Glastonbury Pilgrimage next weekend. Um, sorry, the weekend after. I'll be, yeah, the weekend after. We're getting towards Glastonbury Pilgrimage uh, season. So, um, 
Uh, funnily enough, I'm going to go up to the Glastonbury Abbey, just to let you know, uh, to prepare a virtual pilgrimage. Um, so just like this, but in Glastonbury Abbey. So watch out for that. <laughs> it says, I'm not advertising, but I'll share it with you as well. So we'll be able to do some of that. So for those of you who've not been to Glastonbury, you better see it. Bring it to you. There we go. And then that will be shared around the country as well. So we are trying as much as we can to get this going. Okay, folks. Peter and Paul. There we go. Let's get back to Peter and Paul. Here, there was a Paul here, wasn't there? Yeah, not off. He was very good and all. Um, two great names. Uh, two great rocks on which we build the church. The apostles, the preaching and the evangelism of Paul. The scriptures, the sacrament, your baptism. They all come together to create something which is absolutely indestructible. Indestructible. So don't worry, folks. This temporary problem will be overcome and the church will rejoice. So, let's ask for God's blessing on you and those whom you love, um, wherever you are, wherever you are gathered in the name of Jesus, to give us that strength and that courage to look forward, to have hope and to have faith. The Lord be with you, and also with you. May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, graciously bless you through the glorious merits of the holy apostles Peter and Paul. Amen. And may he who endowed you with the teaching and example of the apostles make you under their protection witnesses to the truth before all. Amen. So that you may, through the intercession of the apostles, you may inherit the eternal homeland, for by their teaching you possess firmness of faith. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. We beseech you, O Lord, pour your grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion, we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen.